First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15, and I want you to look with me at verse number 32. First Corinthians 15 and verse 32. How do you like scary situations? I know your pastor does. When I think of scary situations, I think of stories I've heard of Pastor Price. And if he hasn't told you stories of scary things that he's done, you'll have to ask him sometime. But when I read 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 32, I think of someone who had been in scary situations over and over and over and over and over again. And his name was the Apostle Paul. He's the one speaking to us in 1 Corinthians 15, speaking to the Corinthians about something important. And in the whole chapter of 1 Corinthians 15, he's been talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That if Jesus Christ didn't raise from the dead, then everything that people in Corinth were believing was worthless. It was vain. In fact, the Bible says in verse 19, If in this life only we have hope in Christ... We are of all men most miserable. Now look up here a minute. Do you know people that are miserable? Yes. No. Have you ever looked around people like just in the mall or at the store or driving down the road and you look and see people on the benches? Have you ever seen miserable people? There's yes. a lot of miserable people out there. If in this life only you have hope about Jesus Christ, in this life, if that's all you have hope in, on Sundays, on Saturdays when you have youth events, if in this life only you have hope about Christ, you're going to be miserable. Because there's more to this life than just this life. There's the life that's after this, which is what motivates me about this life. And look at verse 32. Paul tells them something that's important about their thinking. He says in verse 32 of 1 Corinthians 15, If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it me if the dead rise not? Okay, now here's the picture. He says... If after the manner of men, or after the same kind of thinking or way that people in their culture lived, he was to have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage was it if the dead don't rise again? Now, look right up here. Have you ever fought with beasts before? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to mess up your video. No, a beast chased you before. A beast chased you before. But have you actually hand-to-hand -hand combat fought with a beast? My dog. Your dog. Okay. Who won? Me. Okay, you're alive. Okay. Now, if you tell me your dog's a chihuahua, we got problems here. No, no, it wasn't a chihuahua. It's like, no, it, 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 this was before I even had do we I, I fought. Well, yeah. now let me ask you, have you fought with beasts like tigers? Oh, yeah, my no. dreams. <laughs> your dreams. How about, how about the kind of beasts that people fought with in amphitheaters in Roman times? Now, we don't know that that's what happened with Paul, that he was in an amphitheater. I don't think that's the case. I think someone could have very easily sicked their dogs or sick wild beasts onto him because everywhere Paul went, was he always popular? No. No. Were there people that didn't like Paul yes. being in their town? Yes. Yeah, of course. And were there people that tried to kill him? Yes. Yeah, he was stoned and left for dead. Stoned. Now, that's not good. Yes. Whipped, put in prison, Ooh. over and over and over again, Paul faced opposition and risked his life. Now he says here, if after the manner of men I fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it me if the dead rise not? Here's the question. If, if the dead aren't going to rise again, which is what people were teaching, that there was no resurrection, that it's just this life that you live in, and then there's nothing after this. If it's just this life, why waste this life fighting with beasts? And he tells us what the thinking of the culture was. He says, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Okay, if you aren't going to live again, there's no life after this, then you ought to think like the world thinks. Which, by the way, the manner of men that he brings up in verse 32 was this. This was the cultural norm. Eat, drink, tomorrow you die. Do you know that hasn't changed a lot in 2,000 years? That's kind of the way people think today. Actually, haven't you seen, I think there's t-shirts or other things, eat, sleep, repeat, you know, it's kind of like yeah, all there like is that. to life. What's that? Something like that. Something like that. And if all of your life is just consumed with getting up, eating, sleeping, 
go back to bed. Eat, sleep, go back to bed. And then one day you die, and that's it. Can I tell you something? You're going to miss out. And Paul doesn't make a lot of sense in Scripture. When you read about what he does and what he encourages people like you and me to do, and what God wants you and me to do, it doesn't make sense if we don't live after this life. In fact, the next verse says, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Now, the message this evening, or you could call it challenge if you want, would be this. Are you awake? And I want to give you three reasons why you ought to be awake. The state of sleep is the opposite of being awake, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible doesn't say that verse 32 and verse 33 are the state of sleep, but I think it's obvious that the obvious opposite of being awake to righteousness is to think like the world thinks, which is what verse 32 and 33 say. So I want to ask you, are you awake or are you asleep? The state of sleep is when you live like the world's thinking, which is this. I'm just living for right now. Now, have you ever noticed people that just live for right now? Yes. It's easy to just go from moment to moment and day to day just thinking about what do I need to do to get by. In fact, it's easy even for Christians to think that way sometimes. To adopt that kind of mindset. That just, you know, what I gotta do to make it, I'm gonna be okay if I just do enough. And that's because your thinking is about right now, and that's a state of being asleep. How many of you are hard sleepers? Mm. I am an incredibly hard sleeper, Pastor. If you if you um, if you said, hey Frank, you want to take a nap? I would lay down on this platform, and even with people talking in here, I could be asleep in probably five minutes. Just like that. I go to bed at night, lay my head down, I'm out. When I was in college, uh, we had uh, fire drills. Any of you guys been in school and you have fire drills? You remember these, don't you, Pastor? Yep. Many, many times, fire drills after lights out, no less. And one time, I had been working, I worked in college from, I got up at 4.30, worked for a bunch of hours and went to classes, and then I'd come back and study, and then I would sleep, I'd go to bed at like 10.15, be out after per, per group. Well, one night, after uh, the uh, uh, lights out, the alarm goes off. My roommates all get out of the room, I never heard it. And it's loud. It's seriously loud. It's, attention, attention, an emergency has been reported in this building. Please exit using the nearest <coughs> stairwell. Do not use elevators. And it would just scream this, eh, eh, eh. And how I slept through this, I don't know. But I remember my, my floor leader would come through and check the halls to make sure people were up and out of their beds and out of the rooms for the, the fire drill. And he comes in and I'm up on the top bunk and he's shaking me. And as he's shaking me, I slowly begin this, eh, 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 and then it gets louder as I'm waking up because I was asleep. And when I was asleep, I wasn't uh, prepared for what I was supposed to be doing, which is getting out of the building. Now, some of us are, I think, asleep spiritually. I can be asleep spiritually. I can be asleep spiritually when my mindset is like the world's. Can I give you the three reasons why you need to be awake spiritually? Mm -hmm. You need to be awake to righteousness, as verse 34 says. Number one, because you will live again. You will live again. The Bible says in Titus chapter 1, verse 2. Look over at Titus 1, verse 2. The Bible says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Now let me ask you something. If God doesn't lie, and God says that there's life after this, and he's promised it since before the world began, is that a pretty confident thing to know that that's going to happen? Yes. Yes. Without a doubt, you are going to live again. But not only are you going to live again, can I tell you something about this living again? What you do now matters in light of the fact that you're going to live again. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, look over there, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, 2 Corinthians 
that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done. This is not talking about getting into heaven or not getting into heaven based on what you've done. Look up here. Getting into heaven has never been and will never be determined by how good you were. Can I say that again? Getting into heaven has never been and never will be determined by how good you've been. Getting into heaven is dependent upon what you do with Jesus Christ, God's Son. The Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. It's one or the other. You either have life or you don't. And the way that you have life is not by being good, but by having Jesus Christ. And by the way, every one of us need Jesus Christ because you can't be good enough. Jesus Christ alone can pay for your sin because he's God and you can trust him and you can trust him completely for your salvation and I hope that you have I would imagine many of you have but if you haven't trusting Christ for salvation is how you get to heaven is how you are right with God not by being good what's talked about here is believers receiving what it is that they've done do you know that God's going to uh, not judge you for your sin, but judge what you've done with your life. Your sin is paid for in Christ. But your life and what you do with it, God's going to gonna, uh, expect of you something. And you can, you can waste it, or you can use your life for God's glory. Look at what it says there in verse number 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Okay, why was Paul about the business of going places where he could be torn up by beast. Well, look at verse 11. Knowing therefore the terror of who? The Lord. the Lord. Who was it that he cared about the opinion of? God. God's opinion. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. So, you're going to live again, and what you are going to face in the future is what God wants of you, or you didn't do what God wants of you. And it says, uh, we persuade men, in verse number 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Okay, what am I supposed to do with my life? Am I supposed to live unto myself? No. No. I'm to live unto him which died for me. for me. Does that make sense? Now, when when you consider this matter of being awake, number one, consider it in light of the fact you're going to live again. Mm -hmm. And if you trusted Christ, you're going to give an account for what you've done. And knowing the terror of the Lord doesn't mean um, I'm afraid he's going to squish me. The, the point is, I am concerned that what God's going to say about me in the future is something I'm going to live about right now with that opinion. Um, how many of you have ever known what it is to do something that your teacher or your parents were not going to like and you lived not in the terror of it but you knew if you did that they weren't going to be happy with you right mm -hmm. yeah all of us know that a parent a grandparent somebody but the opposite is true as well if i know what will make them not happy don't i know what will make them happy mm -hmm. yeah how much of you is motivated by what will make them happy though this is the look I typically would get for my own kids. Uh, yeah, I'm supposed to be motivated by what makes them happy? I never thought of that. Man, I wonder what it would be like in my family if I did what my parents wanted me to do. Wow. I know it would make Dad mad. You know, it's amazing that sometimes the obvious doesn't hit us in the head. But awaking to righteousness means... Oh, yeah, I'm going to live again. Number two, and this is a big deal. It's really easy to pick up what the world does. Number two, it's this. It's really easy to be asleep. Mm. Yeah. Hey, you need to awake to righteousness because it's really easy to be asleep, yeah, which is what the Corinthian church really struggled with, being asleep spiritually. Mm. They had a problem with trying to be... Oh yeah, I'm going to follow after Christ, but I really enjoy doing all these things I was doing before. Can a Christian sin? Yes. yes. Yeah, you will. I have. It's not going to be the first. What do you do when you sin? 
Um, and this is a big deal. Not like what did the sin is that you've done. I mean, what do you do about it? Don't tell me what you've done. Oh, no, I'm no, asking no. you. I know. I know what what do you do about sin? it? No, I know what happens. Like, okay, so when you right. sin, when you sin, right? Yeah. God don't like you. Yep. So then, so then, like that stays in your, like in your. Imagine you have a sin collection, right? Every time you do a sin, it's like you get stacked up into one of them, and one of them, and mm -hmm. one of them. That's what happens when you sin. Like you don't, you do yeah. something bad or something like that. Yeah, it's like having your fellowship with that person not be good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now it doesn't mean that you're not. You heard that? You heard that? I did a, I did a good. You're, you're listening. Yeah, I'm listening. You're listening. I'm listening. I love it. I'm I listen listening. to Bible studies. Good. Sometimes. Well, at the end of this, you're going to have to answer a question for yourself, every one of you. And that is, are you awake or are you asleep? So don't answer yet because you haven't heard all three reasons. Okay, number one, because you're going to live again. So are you motivated every single day, every moment of that day, by the fact you're going to live again? And if you are, you're thinking the terror of the Lord, not what does everyone else around me think. All right, we can talk a lot about that. Number two, because it's really easy to be asleep. It says in verse 33, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Now, I always heard that kind of like pulled out of the like out of the blue to preach when I was a kid. And it's true. If you have bad friends, it's going to make a difference on you. If you have bad influences on you, that's obvious. But can I tell you what this is talking about? Yes, you can. Thank you. <laughs> hey, if you have bad thinking about what's going to happen after you die, it's going to affect what you do right now. If you live with the attitude that says, hey, eat, drink, tomorrow we die. Hey, live it up right now. Life is about now. That's going to impact how holy you're going to live. How pleasing to God you're going to live. Evil communications. That means evil interactions. Do you know what some evil interactions could be in our lives? Yes. Not, not just friends talking bad to you. What is it communicating to you? Eat, drink, tomorrow you die. Do you know that music in our culture communicates to you? Eat, drink, tomorrow you die. Yes. Television and movies communicate to you. Eat, drink, tomorrow you die. Yes. Um, the heroes of our culture. Which are who? American Idol. Is American Idol about something that's going to be eternal? No. But are those people famous to people in our culture? Maybe not to you, but you're like, do a, do people live in the term in the past was 15 minutes of fame? Do people live for fame? No, yeah. I mean yes. Sure they do. Yeah, I don't care about fame. Okay. No, I don't care about fame. Do you have Facebook? Facebook. Twitter. It must be Instagram. Snapchat, Instagram. How many of you have Instagram? Snapchat. Snapchat and Snapchat. Instagram. Okay. How many people on those places, and maybe even ourselves, try to make ourselves look good? I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. Now let me ask you something. Is what you do right now about you being impressive, or is it at all connected to what you think someone else will think of you? No. Uh, be careful. It's amazing how much we can even trick ourselves about this. Mm -hmm. Remember what I said? It's easy to be asleep? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it possible you could be asleep and not know it? Yeah. I got to tell you a story. I, I don't know if I've ever told this story before. <laughs> it's dangerous to tell stories you've never told before. Especially with your wife not there. Especially with, but I've got you to tell me if it made no sense. Okay, your wife's going to kill you. Yes, she will. No, this is one of those stories. I would, would drive home from college, and where I lived, it was about 13 hours to drive, and we would leave after like noon, and we'd get home at like 1 or 2 in the morning or something. And driving at night is not something I am skilled at. Get up early in the morning, fine. But once it gets around 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, in the past, anyways, I've done it since then and done fine. But when I was younger... I would fall asleep. Now, the falling asleep when I'm driving was not the kind of sleep where I knew I was falling asleep. It was like this. I would realize I don't remember what the last 20 miles of road was or where I was or what I've been through. Now, you could say I was awake, but I would say I was more asleep because I don't recall where I was and what I was doing. Now, look up here, guys. Is it possible to think I'm awake and be acting like I'm asleep? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, 
I think a lot of Christians, including myself, can be in that spot sometimes. Where I know what's right, but I'm allowing things to take place that I'm ignoring. That are just flying by me like road that I've not even thought about where I was or what I was doing. And you know what? You would be a waste if you spent five years of your life in that kind of mode. Just letting stuff fly by because you didn't wake up. If you spent a year like that, or stuff was just flying by because you didn't wake up and see what was passing you, because you were in, I call it zombie mode, <laughs> when you hit 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock and you're driving, and you see stuff and it's just, and you don't know where you are, you're just driving. You're no good! And you know what? A Christian that's in zombie mode is no good. He's not helping get the work done. He's not awake. Number one, you're, you ought to be awake because you're going to live again. Number two, because it's easy to be asleep. Number three, and here's the best one, I think, to motivate us. Look at verse number 34 of 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 34. Here's the action. What does it say in the first word of verse 34? Awake. Awake, awake to what? So I'm just supposed to wake up? I'm awake to something. Awake to righteousness. And what does that mean? And sin not. sin not. Okay. The opposite of being asleep is doing what's right. If I just live thinking, well, I'm going to eat, drink, tomorrow I die, there's a lot of stuff I can do inside that parameter that's not going to be good. Awake is saying, okay, I'm going to be awake to what is right. And sin not. And here's the reason or the motivation. You ought to, number three, be awake because of this second part of the verse. For some have not the knowledge of God. Now stop a minute and think about this, okay? Is it possible, and the Bible tells us it is, that there are people who do not know God, but who know you? Yes. That's hard. That's a hard thing to swallow. That there are people who know you, but do not know God. And the reason they don't know God is because you're not awake to righteousness. Mm. You're not doing what's right. And by not doing what's right, people don't know God. Now look up here. This is really important. You can stay asleep and people will go to hell not knowing God. Mm. Or you can wake up every day and every moment of the day and let the terror of God and the fact that you're going to meet him one day and give account for what you do motivate you. You can live asleep and just say, hey, eat, drink, tomorrow we die. Well, let's just party. Let's have a good time. Like, let's just be moderate. Let's just be, you know, just get by with what i got to get by with. Or I can be sold out. Was Paul sold out, would you say? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Paul was sold out. Hey, he was thrown in prison. He gets out of prison. He goes to the next town to tell people about Christ. He gets kicked out of that town, and he goes to the next town, and he tells people about Christ. He just keeps going, and he's like the Energizer Bunny. He doesn't get stopped. Why? Well, yeah, it wasn't he not, because... Because he's not asleep. Because he's not asleep. <laughs> now, how sold out are you? The Bible says, Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God... I speak this to your, what's the last word? Shame. 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 You know, I don't like being ashamed. I don't. I don't like it when my parents said to me, I'm ashamed of you. It meant something to me when my dad would say, I'm ashamed of the way you just acted. Mm. If, if Pastor Price said to me, Frank, I'm ashamed of you, that would mean something to me. I, I value his friendship. But for, for God to be ashamed of us, for Christ, who died for me and for my sin, to know that kind of shame, that's a big deal. And you've got a choice to make. you got a choice to make. Are you asleep? And if you are, do you... Do you see where you need to wake up? Are there specific things the Holy Spirit of God brought to your mind tonight that you're asleep in? I didn't get a lot of specific things, but the attitude of the culture 
that says just do whatever you want to do because it's just about now, there's a lot of stuff that you do right now that's just about now and doesn't have a thing to do with people and eternity. And maybe you ought to pick up one thing this next week that you do that matters for eternity. Pick up one thing. Pick one person this week that you're going to talk to about Jesus Christ. You know, it'll be a tough thing for you to talk about Jesus Christ to some people if they know you by being asleep with them. Does that make sense? Yes. You can't, you can't talk about being awake to people who think of you as being asleep spiritually. So guess what? That means this week you might need to be awake in some areas you've been asleep and your friends need to know that you're waking up. Hey, you know what? That way I used to talk. I'm not going to talk that way because that's not who I am in Christ. Hey, friends, hey, that kind of stuff I used to do with you guys, I can't do that anymore because that's not who I am in Jesus Christ. What? What? What happened to you? What happened? Well, I'm living like what I am. I've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, and that's not that's not right for me to do. What? You think that, by the way, might be a little bit awkward for some of us to do things that, yeah, of course it's going to be awkward, but you know what? That's the starting point for them to know that you know God. Because you care about what God thinks, and now they're going to start to think, why does he care about what God thinks? What? Why does he care? Well, first of all, they're going to say, why are you doing this? Then they're going to find out it has something to do with you and God. And that's the starting point for them to know that they have a God mm -hmm. who loves them and sent his son to die for them. Does this make sense? Yeah. The question is, are you going to be awake? I, I, I don't want to be ashamed. And I don't want to stay asleep or I ought to be awake. The way to be awake, um, you can look at this later, but Romans 13, it talks about this. You don't have to turn over there. I'll just read it for you. Romans 13 says in verse 11, And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly. You're honest in your living when you do what's right, because you've been saved. And then at the end of the chapter it says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust of it. How do you, how do you awake to right? Put on Christ. You don't do it by, I'm going to be good this week. Arr! No. You admit, hey, Jesus Christ saved me from the penalty of my sin. I don't deserve hell. But Jesus Christ also saved me from the power of sin. I'm new because of Christ. So I'm going to put on Christ and awake to righteousness. All right? So let me ask you something. Where are you at? Would you just sit up straight for just a minute? Close your eyes, but don't bend over, okay? Don't bend your forward. You can just close your eyes where you sit. Let me ask you this. How do you say, Mr. Frank, there's some areas I've been asleep spiritually, and I see I need to be awake to them. God pointed out something or some things specifically that I've been asleep in the area of, and tonight I'm going to give them to God. I'm going to tell him, I'm going to admit it to him. And tonight, I want to be awake in some specific areas and do what's right by his power and by his help. You'd say, that's me. If that's you, just raise your hand up real quick. Great. Good. You put your hands down. How many of you say, there's people that don't know God, and I'm the one that has perhaps been a hindrance to them knowing God. And I don't want to be a hindrance to people knowing God anymore. That's me. Raise your hand up if that's you tonight. I don't want to be a hindrance to people knowing God because of what I've been doing. I want to wake to righteousness so that people know God through me. Okay, you can put your hands down. The Bible says in that verse, Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. You know what? Right now, why don't you tell God what he's shown you and admit it to him and ask for his power to have victory and then I'll close in prayer, okay?
Dear God, thank you that you've shown us how we can please you and how we can impact those around us that may not even know God yet, maybe don't even know God tonight because of us. And I pray that that would not be, that would not be the continued testimony in any of us, that tonight we would change what needs to change. Help me, Lord, to be aware of my attitude and my thinking. Let me not be asleep and, and not notice it. Help me, Lord, to awake to righteousness and do what is right, empowered by Christ and the Holy Spirit, and not my flesh, to do what's right. Lord, I pray that people would know I'm sold out to Christ because I know that there's life after this. And Lord, I pray that these young people tonight that have seen areas that they've not been right with you, and have admitted it to you, that they would see victory in the coming days, even, and even tonight. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening.